What's going on guys and welcome to the next episode of the crack a pack series today We are opening up a pack of dominaria obviously a fairly new set But one that I really really enjoy lots of really cool cards in here Obviously the pull we're looking for is to fairy uh, there is no way around it Karn would also be fantastic uh, Lots of really good stuff in here though, especially for limited so we will go through this uh, As with every crack a pack as if this is a pack one pick one scenario and hopefully be able to determine what a reasonable pack one pick one would actually be. Uh, I did draft this set a little bit, so I do uh, have a rough idea of what some of the good cards are. Uh, I didn't actually play competitively with this set, but I did kind of practice draft a lot and then drafted with just friends and stuff. So we'll see what we get. Uh, but our first card here is Opt. Uh, it's an instant for one blue. You can scry one, which means you look at the top card of your library. Uh, you put that card either on the top or the bottom. So you can either leave it on top if you like it, or you can throw it down to the bottom of your deck if it's just not the card you need at that point. Uh, and then you draw a card. So it's a really efficient draw spell. I don't like taking these early. If I'm in a blue deck, they're good. Uh, they're not amazing. Uh, if you remember way back when, uh, Will and I presented an episode of the podcast where we talked about what cards are good and what cards seem to be good but probably are not quite as good and limited. Uh, and draw spells, while pretty good uh, for certain decks, are not always what you want. Uh, obviously drawing cards is good, but they're not affecting the board. And in limited, ideally you wanna be doing big things to impact the board as much as possible. So uh, not the best card in the world, but definitely one that I would happily play in a blue deck. Uh, Invoke the Divine is a instant for two and a white. Destroy target artifact or enchantment, and then you gain four life. Pretty straightforward effect. We see this in most sets. Uh, it's just artifact and enchantment hate. I do like that this gains you four life also, and it's an instant speed for only three mana, uh, which means it is pretty efficient. It's not a card that you really want to main deck most of the time. I say that uh, in this set, um, artifacts are a little bit bigger, not huge, but they are definitely used pretty often. Uh, and so there are instances where maybe, uh, I, I would shy away from it, but maybe. Uh, but this is a really, really good sideboard card if you are in white. Uh, and so for that reason, I would pick this again, similar to opt. I would pick this later in the draft if I was in the color, uh, but otherwise not really that interested. Uh, Bloodstone Goblin is a 2-2 for one and a red. Uh, whenever you cast a spell, if that spell was kicked, Bloodstone Goblin gets plus one, plus one and gains menace until end of turn. This is just a very above average two drop in my mind. Uh, it's a 2-2 two, two for two, so it's good, uh, but it does have that added bonus of if you kick something, it gets a little bit of a buff. Uh, as well as Menace, which is actually pretty cool. Uh, kicking uh, is a mechanic that I'm pretty positive we'll see a card featured uh, with it in this pack, uh, but it is a pretty popular mechanic in this set. I like this card. It's not really a first pick in my mind, but it's definitely a good card, so for now, I'm going to keep it here. Uh, Befuddle is an instant for two and a blue. Target creature gets minus four, minus zero until end of turn, and you also draw a card. Uh, I've actually been a little bit impressed with this card. It's not one that I'm really excited about, to be honest. It's not hard removal. It's nothing like that. Uh, it's a negative combat trick. So basically you just use it on your opponent's creature. What's really nice about this card is that it replaces itself. So it's not only a negative combat trick, but it's also a draw spell. Uh, so it's not like you're losing tons of value or momentum when you play it. And so for that reason, I actually kind of like it. Uh, it's still not, I mean, it's not better than the Bloodstone Goblin in my mind, but uh, it's an okay card. It's one that I would play in a blue deck if need be. And here we go. So, uh, Gift of Growth is one in a green for an instant. It does have Kicker, so for two mana, you can uh, basically play, as you play this card, you can pay an additional two of any color to kick this spell. Uh, and untap the creature, uh, it gains plus two, plus two until the end of the turn. If the spell was kicked, that creature gets plus four, plus four until the end of the turn. So you can see how kicking kind of adds a bonus to the card. Uh, this is actually just a really, really good combat trick. Uh, it's very efficient. The ability to kick it late game if you draw it late game just means you're going to get more value out of it. Uh, kicker in general is a really sweet mechanic, so I do like that. Uh, definitely would want this in a green deck, uh, but it's not first pick again. You can usually pick these up kind of middle of the pack uh, pretty easily. Uh, Blessing of Bells and Locks. So it's one black for an instant. Target creature gets plus two, plus one until the end of the turn. If it's legendary, it also gains lifelink until the end of the turn. Um, legendary, the legendary kind of mechanic, just being legendary, is like a huge thing for this set. Uh, legendary creatures, uh, artifacts, I believe, or no, that's historic. I might be wrong. Uh, anyway, regardless, 
it's just an added buff basically uh but in general this is just an okay combat trick not something i'm super excited about but it is efficient so for that reason i'd probably play it if i needed it uh Peg pegasus courser wow uh stuttering real hard it's a one three for two and a white it does have flying and when it attacks another target attacking creature gains flying until the end of the turn so this actually grants something else flying uh, I really like this and just a blue white flyers deck it's a, just a pretty good three drop to be honest uh, it's not amazing by any means but it's one that kind of keeps you uh, in a forward moving direction because you can keep swinging in with creatures if you can swing in with this so I really like that uh, not first pick necessarily but I'll keep it here with the with the goblin for now uh, short sword is a artifact equipment for one of any color the equipped creature gets plus one plus one and the equipped cost is only one uh, so this is actually a really lucrative card in this set uh, it is historic uh, artifacts are all historic uh, by nature uh, which is cool and this is flexible so it does go into basically any uh, any deck because it is colorless so uh, for that reason I don't mind picking these up in this set uh, you can actually get a little bit of an added bonus because of the historic uh, element to this but it's not something I'm interested in first picking by any means. It's more of a filler card, uh, and then if you can get any kind of buffs from it being historic, it's great. Uh, Vicious Offering is an instant for one and a black. You can kick it uh, by sacrificing a creature, but target creature gets minus two, minus two until the end of the turn. If the spell is kicked, that creature gets minus five, minus five until the end of turn instead. So uh, essentially this is just a somewhat flexible removal spell. Uh, it can basically either be a dead weight or a dismember and both are pretty good So I like this card. I like that. It's instant speed uh, The kicker is yes, you do have to sacrifice a creature that kind of sucks, but uh, Most of the time you're trading up. So it's actually more worth it. I actually like this To be honest, I think a little more than these two cards that might be wrong, uh, but I really like this card uh, El Elfham Druid uh, is a zero two for one and a green you can tap it to add green to your mana pool or you can tap it to add two green but you can only spend this mana to cast kicked spells so this is basically a buff to all your kicker cards uh, this is an okay card I, the thing about this is it's a two drop mana dork uh, normally you kind of want them at one uh, land war elves is in this set for instance and that's a much better card uh, I like the fact that this gives you a bonus though if you are kicking a spell uh, green is probably the one that features kicker the most if I had to guess uh, that is a bit of just a guess though so don't take that to heart but uh, this definitely enables a lot of stuff and so it is good uh, and it does ramp you technically so I like that but I don't think uh, this is really the mana dork that I would want uh, not first pick at least uh, curator's ward is an enchant permanent for two and a blue uh, the Enchanted Permanent has Hexproof, and when the Enchanted Permanent leaves the battlefield, if it was Historic, draw two cards. And so here we go. Uh, historic cards are Artifacts, Legendaries, and Sagas, which are new to this set as well. Uh, I do believe you get a Saga in every, or a Legendary creature in every pack, so we might not get a Saga. But if we do, we'll talk about it. Um, this card's okay. It's not great, uh, I don't think. Uh, giving Hexproof is fantastic. I do like that. Uh, and then of course the historic uh, being able to draw two cards is pretty good too but in general it just doesn't seem like it does enough uh, you can kind of just let the creature sit there and then you don't draw cards uh, and if it's not historic you're not going to draw cards anyway so uh, it does have hexproof which is cool but not that exciting uh, okay helm of the host is a legendary artifact equipment for four mana uh, at the beginning of your combat on your turn Create a token that's a copy of the equipped creature, except the token is not legendary if the equipped creature is legendary and that creature has haste. It does have an equipped cost of five. Uh, so it's pretty expensive, but this card uh, wins games on its own, uh, is what I would say. Uh, just being able to spit out tokens is great. Uh, giving them haste is even better. Uh, this is absolutely a powerhouse card and it fits into any deck, which is perfect. It leaves you open, but gives you a win condition at the same time. So that's definitely up there on the list. We do have a saga, and it's a foil one. Uh, the Antiquities War. Uh, so it's three and a blue for an enchantment saga. Again, that does make it historic. Uh, sagas enter the battlefield, and after your draw step, you add a, uh, a lore counter to it, and then you sacrifice it after three. So basically, when you initially play it, you get the first ability. Uh, after you draw, 
you get uh, a counter on it and then the, the second ability happens and then after your next draw step uh, you get the third ability and then it's sacrificed. So for the first two you look at the top five cards of your library you may reveal an artifact card from among them and put it into your hand. You then put the rest on the bottom of your library in any order. Uh, again that's the first two times that this triggers. And then the third ability artifacts you control become artifact creatures with base power and toughness 5-5 five, five until the end of the turn. So definitely a powerhouse card, but I will say it's a little bit better in constructed. Uh, the reason being you really have to have the artifact count to make this great. Uh, you can still make it pretty good, don't get me wrong, it's definitely a pretty powerful card, but I don't think it's better than Helm of the Host, uh, and so for that reason, not going to pick it over that. And then we do have our legendary creature, Tiana, Ship's Caretaker. This is a flagship card for kind of the Boros colors, so it's three, a, a red and a white for a 3-3. Three, three does have flying in first strike which does make it pretty good just on the face of it uh, but whenever an aura or equipment you control is put into a graveyard from the battlefield you may return that card to its owner's hand at the beginning of the next end step so weirdly I would want this with Helm of the Host uh, but I definitely would take Helm of the Host over it it's a powerhouse win uh, kind of card and so for that reason Helm of the Host absolutely is going to be my pick uh, feel free to disagree in the comment section below if you feel like I uh, maybe should have picked something else, but that's definitely what I would take. Uh, if you did enjoy this episode, please make sure to leave a like or a comment down below. And as always, please make sure to subscribe to stay up to date on all of our awesome content. But with that, I'm going to get out of here. Thanks for watching, guys. I'll see you in the next Crack-A-Pack episode.